from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. South Africa's biggest cement producer, Pretoria Portland Cement, believes the rate of decline in demand for cement has been slowing, with the industry beginning to show some signs of a possible recovery. Rindavani Naidu reports. South Africa's building and construction sectors are under significant strain, the result of which has had multiplying effects on other sectors of the economy, including the cement industry. In all likelihood, cement sales for 2011 are expected to follow a similar trend to that of 2010. Engineering news is at PPC's Hercules factory in Pretoria, and we're going to talk to PPC's Kevin Odendahl about operating in today's competitive market. The cement industry saw a peak in sales of just over 15 million tonnes in 2007, and we've probably come off that number about 20 to 25 percent. So we're sitting towards between 11 and 12 million tonnes currently. So there has been a decline in, in, in demand. What is encouraging is we've seen industry figures over the last three months have shown positive year-on-year -year growth. So while it's too early to say whether this will be the bottom of the cycle, it's definitely showing some, some signs of growth. And this was in line with what we said at our interim results where we indicated that we thought that maybe the second half of the year would see positive growth. Obviously with the, the downturn in demand, we've got into a situation where there's more production capacity in the country than there is demand and that just increases competitive dynamics. People are trying harder to sell their cement and it is more difficult to, to encourage um, people to buy your cement. So what we have done is, apart from our product range, we've also looked at uh, rationalizing some of our plants. So as you saw here today, one of our kilns has stopped. So we're only running the most efficient plant now and ensuring that at least we, we are maintaining good costs of production. It is a more competitive environment, so one is looking for ways to make sure that your product is the chosen one over the others. So what we've done is we've, we've um, relaunched products which we've had, existing products which we've had, SureBuild, our SureBuild brand and our what we call OPC, Ordinary Portland Cement. What we've done is we've upgraded them in terms of strength class, so they're moving into a new category and as a result they're really a, a much more premium product than the other general purpose cements out there and we feel that this is going to, to help us in our competitive stance as customers will realize they're getting better value for money with a, a high strength class cement. Other news making headlines this week. Mittal expects to make a call on its Northern Cape iron ore mine by the end of August. Logistics are key to unlocking big intra-regional trade potential and FDI inflows to South Africa slumped 70% in 2010. Steel group ArcelorMittal South Africa expects to complete its due diligence of a modest size iron ore prospect in the Northern Cape by the end of August and has indicated that such small scale developments are likely to be central to its aspiration of closing a backward integration step in its sources of iron ore supply. We need 10 million tonnes of iron ore uh, in a good year. Right? Um, we have 6.5 million tonnes from Sishin and another 2.4 from Tabazimbi. Uh, so there's a small gap, and at the moment um, we can't get that from local sources, i.e. BSO, 10% of our, um, our purchases was from, from them. That's why the focus is on small mines. We would in fact buy a small mine if one was to become available and there was um, sufficient reason to believe that logistics would work. Um, and if you see everything we, we do, it's going to be modest. The South African Maritime Safety Authority says there is big potential in intra-African trade as the continent depends on trade for economic development as well as regional or intra-regional trade. The development of all the other landlocked countries and markets are dependent on the performance of the network of maritime transport and logistics corridors and that includes our ports and ships that carry that trade. In that context, then, the development of the African maritime transport infrastructure becomes a key enabler and catalyst for the competitiveness and development of Africa's economy. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development's World Investment Report 2011 shows that foreign direct investment flows to South Africa slumped by more than 70% in 2010. South Africa's share in, value, in dollar terms of FDI, its inflows, I should say, dropped by 70% compared with 2009. Um, and it's only uh, one sixth of the peak uh, for South Africa, which was in 2008. 
the headline number for South Africa is seven, minus 70 percent. Also, we were only the tenth largest recipient in Africa during 2010, and we only got 2.8 percent, let's say three percent, of the total of Africa. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.